Hello and welcome to episode 87 of Let's Play Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut. God, I did it right this time, Joe. And with me is my friend, Luigi. Hello. Yeah, now I have 108 rings. 123, I mean. How nice. Things are very sporadic. You don't know, like, not very many or just like huge or infinitely respawning amounts for you to light like, speed dash and then piles upon piles of cases of them or whatever you call them. <laughs> Capsules. Well, hey, it's a Sonic game. It's supposed to be easy for kids, so obviously if there are a bunch of rings near each other, that's good. So then they will figure out Hey, if there are rings nearby, there are a lot of rings. And if there aren't any rings nearby, then there are not very many rings. Well, that's pretty easy for kids. I think when I first played this, I guess I was like 13 or 12 or something. Yeah. I could probably look it up if I figured out when this came out. But, um, I had an easy time. I think I was stuck for a little bit on the final lane, but I beat basically all the story mode without a problem until I big, so I could catch Froggy in the first level and then just like, I don't know what it was, I could find him, just couldn't go on the fishing rod. And I have to have one of my friends beat him. You know, I'd like to take a chance to just reference something that's completely uh, random, but basically I've noticed how my commentary style kind of changes when I'm by myself and when I'm with others. I mean, when I'm by myself, I usually talk about the game more. Whenever I'm talking with people like you, then I go off on random subjects a lot. Not talking about the game at all. Man, I just like sort of risky and I can bring up random thoughts. And also, I've never played mission mode, so I don't really have any thoughts on that. Yeah. But, even if I end up having guest commentators who know about the game, I usually end up talking about something completely unrelated to the game. It's kind of funny. It's almost like whenever I'm talking with anyone else, all I can think of is having a conversation instead of talking about the game. Yeah, maybe when you do Ocarina of Time or... Ocarina of Time, Ocarina of Time, or whatever the accepted pronunciation is. It's pronunciation. I've actually played through that, so maybe if I guess commentate on some of those, we can discuss the finer points of the game or something. <laughs> Perhaps. I know that I've already done seven episodes, as I've said before, so I can tell you now that I did indeed talk about the game more than I thought I would have. Okay, and on that note, what kind of a name is Speed Highway? Is that opposed to, like, the highway where you really don't go all that fast? Um, what if there was a highway which you would have to go 10 miles per hour on? Then there's, like, Radical Highway in Sonic Adventure 2. Is that opposed to Mundane Highway? <laughs> All highways are mundane. I think these jokes would be better in text format. Probably or not. I don't know. Well, you have With to imagine a big old colon backslash after all of these because it seems to look like I'm indifferent and upset by a matter. Hmm. Well, at least with talking, there's always emotion. Yeah, for some people. I mean, uh, speaking of emotion, it's like, you, uh, once commented that you wanted to see me freak out in a live run. Trust me, I do so in Ocarina of Time. You'll just enjoy that. Cool, cool. <laughs> it's like, uh, I'm very early on in the game and I messed up at a uh, minigame uh, with the slingshot to get the upgrade for the deck of I don't thing. remember that, but I was very good at exploring in that game. Yeah! While I have 
basically been religiously doing practice runs with the game to make sure that I know what to do when I've been playing, even though it's a live run. Yeah, I, mean, I don't. I've been especially because. You go. Yeah, especially because of live run because you don't want to mess up when you're doing live run. And you still sometimes will, even if you've done hundreds of practice runs. I mean, yeah, most probably. of the time all my live runs are without practice, which doesn't necessarily mean blind, because most of the games I let's play I have done a playthrough or two of beforehand, but I think for, like, Zelda games are just so, they're not mission-based, so it's sort of hard to organize what you're going to do, and it's really easy to waste a lot of time if you don't practice those beforehand. Hmm. Oh, speaking of which, a lot of people probably wouldn't believe this, but, uh, Right about when I started this Let's Play, I was actually, uh, very untrained with how to play the game. I mean, I hadn't played this game for years since I got it for the GameCube, and yeah, I've not needed to do practice runs for this game really, because hey, my progress saves after every time I do something, so I just cut out whatever I mess up. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I do most of the time. Most of the time, I think, like, there are the people who are gonna be pissed off if you die ever. I know that my basically pouring myself out in the new Super Mario Bros. Wii Let's Play made me pretty prone to that, but I think that pretty much anyone who can figure out a capture device and wants to record games is gonna be good enough at video games that they're not, like, just making no progress whatsoever if they can't practice beforehand. Yeah, the weird thing is that uh, my subscribers really do not care what I do so far. I mean, I don't have very many, but it's like I don't have the most vocal subscribers. They'll just comment on a few videos and say some random things about those videos. Like, most people have been complaining about the lip syncing, which everyone knows is horrible, so I'm not gonna beat dead dead horse anymore. Which I kind of liked it a little bit um, weird in that respect, I guess. Yeah, you tend to like things that are things which other people do not like very much. Yeah, I like being contrary, but uh, yeah, it takes a while to build up a really vocal fan base. I think it's like people need to listen to you for a long time so they can become comfortable at you and then start nitpicking at your every little move. <laughs> when people start nitpicking at every one of my moves, that'd be funny. Then I can start ignoring their complaints, because I do things the way I want to. Uh, yep. And then Red Mountain again with the inspired names. I miss the old days of the Genesis where they just made up weird words for the names of the zones. Well, Green Hill was a very unoriginal yeah, name. Yeah, first when they started getting to like Aqua Cola, Aqua Cola, so, uh, probably a bunch of other things that are just two perfectly normal words, and I haven't played the old Sonic games enough to remember what the name of the zones are called properly. Well, there's always the Death Egg Zone, which isn't the original either. So it's more like Death Star. Oh wait, the Ark is more like a Death Star than the Death Egg, but it's still named after the Death Star. So what are we gonna do on the next, like, dramatic-ish game where Eggman needs to blow up some kind of planetary body? Because in Sonic Adventure 2, he blew up half the moon, and I'm under the impression in Sonic Unleashed, he actually split apart the Earth. Well, it's debatable. I mean, his machine did basically do it, but you could also say that Dark Gaia did it. But he is the cause of why Dark Gaia did it. Okay, but yeah, still, he split apart the Earth, so what, where does he go after that? Like, melting the sun? <laughs> that would be funny. How about freezing the sun? Yeah, and that 
actually maybe not freezing the sun, but like somehow messing it up so it stops being so dense and then uh, all the planets fly off and we can have Super Sonic Galaxy. Oh, speaking of which, if they actually do rip off Mario Galaxy, maybe they can do a Sonic Galaxy where Eggman just tries to rule the entire universe. I mean, if you notice, uh, Sonic sure likes to rip off Mario. I mean, like I said, I played the All-Stars demo, it's a Mario Kart ripoff. To well, every good racing extent. game is a Mario Kart ripoff. No, I mean to an extreme extent. There is an equivalent to the three red shells, the three green shells, and there's a equivalent to the chain chomp. Again, pretty and much every good racing game I've played has basically been... Oh, we're ending the episode here, yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully you've enjoyed it. Bye. Bye. Ha ha.